This is Nishant with JavaScript Static Security Analysis Made Easy with JS Prime. Let's give him a hand. Uh, thanks, Jack, for introducing me. Uh, thank you guys for coming in. I know it's tough to be in a session uh, right after the lunch in the afternoon, so I'll try my best to keep you awake during the session. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, as Jack mentioned, uh, this talk will be uh, titled as uh, JavaScript Static Analysis, Static Security Analysis Made Easy uh, with a tool that we have been working since last couple of months called JS Prime. And uh, so before we get started, uh, I just wanted to uh, ask you guys, uh, please raise up your hands. How many of you are uh, JavaScript developers here or are involved in uh, source code reviews of security, secure code reviews of JavaScript? OK, lots of hands. Thank you. Uh, OK, so uh, let's get started. So by the way, th this talk will be uh, was uh, jointly prepared by me and uh, my uh, friend Sarthi. Uh, unfortunately, he is not here due to some uh, visa problem, so I'll be uh, taking this session alone. So, we have the agenda uh, for uh, today. Uh, for the next uh, 40, 45 minutes or so, I'll be speaking on some of these uh, things. We'll first talk about the problem, uh, the problem that we w we're trying to solve, uh, and uh, We'll try to introduce you why it's a problem, what is the problem, and how it can be a problem, and some of the demos. Then we'll introduce uh, uh, the tool or the solution that we're working uh, called JS Prime. I'll tell you what is it, who is it meant for, how it works, what it can do, and what it cannot do, so that I set the expe expectation right. <coughs> and. Uh, uh, though I have kept uh, the last 10 minutes for question and session, uh, answers, but please feel free to stop me anywhere when you want some clarification or you have some doubts. Okay, so a brief, uh, seamless uh, self-promotion. So I am a first time Black Hat speaker and first time in Vegas too, so a little bit nervous. <laughs> Hope you'll... Uh, <laughs> Hope you guys will make me comfortable. And uh, I'm a, I work as a senior partner at Yahoo, uh, India. And as a, how many of you uh, are uh, from Yahoo here? Okay, lots of guys. So I'm already comfortable. <laughs> I was uh, uh, previously worked for eBay as a security engineer uh, during my weekends. Uh, so since my manager is here, so I'll uh, just say in my weekends, I'm a bug bounty hunter. <laughs> uh, I have managed to be successful in uh, for uh, hunting some bugs for Facebook, Mozilla, Nokia, Foursquare, and like some similar companies. I was a speaker at uh, Nullcon 2012, which is a security conference um, in that, uh, that takes place in uh, India. And there we release a very uh, basic Firefox add-on that helps you scan for DOM-based access issues. Um, I, I've been studying, uh, say, self-studying security for the last uh, five years or so. I occasionally play uh, grand piano and uh, keyboards, and uh, recently uh, I'm, I've been turned into a sports bike enthusiast. So that's uh, uh, in my introduction. I'll just take a few minutes to introduce Sarthi. Uh, unfortunately, he's not here, as I told you. He's a very experienced application developer, uh, almost about uh, more than seven years of experience. He uh, was with Yahoo for the last five years or so. He is now the full-time uh, developer for this tool called JS Prime. You can catch him up at uh, his Twitter handle and as well as on Facebook. Okay, so let's get serious. <laughs> JavaScript. Um, it's 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 not nothing new. We all know uh, JavaScript. You guys have been uh, writing applications in JavaScript, but the fact today is that it's the lingua franca of web and mobile now. You you uh, you see there are new technologies coming up. Firefox OS, 
you name it, uh, on mobile devices, on mainstream web applications, in hybrid mobile applications like uh, using frameworks like PhoneGap, and uh, in Windows uh, mobile phones, uh, what they call it as WinJS. And there are new SDKs or frameworks being released like the Goo Engine, which is uh, you uh, lets you write uh, interactive and uh, 3D games using JavaScript and HTML5. So it's everywhere. And uh, I, sorry, I forgot to mention about Node.js, the new uh, server-side uh, JavaScript. So it's almost everywhere, be it client-side, be it server-side, be it on mobile phones. It's everywhere. So it's becoming the most, uh, I mean, the de facto language for developers because they need to know just one language and they can program for, like, say, whatever application they need to or feel, uh, feel like. Uh, so that's about it. And uh, so what is the problem with JavaScript then? So before I uh, talk about the problem in, in context to security, I just wanted to uh, let you know that why it's a big deal in a, you know, uh, or big deal to review JavaScript-based source codes. Why, why there's a uh, talk uh, on, uh, on a tool that just scans JavaScript source code and figures out security issues. That's because JavaScript is a very dynamic language. And these are some of the uh, points that I have mentioned. I'll just go uh, through. I'll just go through uh, each one of them and show you some code snippets. And uh, I hope I'll, I'll be able to convince you why it's it's it can be a really a pain or it can be really tricky to write a at least a good JavaScript source code scanner, if not perfect. So. JavaScript, as you know, is an uh, object-oriented uh, uh, language. Uh, you can create properties uh, on demand. So let us just go and I'll, I'll just show you some uh, source codes. Okay, so let me just try and explain you uh, briefly uh, object-oriented and properties created on demand. So you see here, uh, this line separates three different uh, code snippets. But the interesting thing here is all these code snippets do the exact same thing. So what I've done here is I'm trying to create an object called black hat. And there's a uh, function called upcoming, which is declared this way. And it's an, it has another attribute called events, which is an array. So this is one way you can uh, create an object. This is the second way. I'm using the new uh, operator um, and defining an object which um, called black hat, and I am using the object or define property to do this exact same thing. Have an attribute called upcoming, which is a function, and passing these uh, function arguments, which is like writable, is it modifiable or not, enumerable, whether it shows up in the uh, foreign loop or the object dot keys. Configurable or not, whether you can dynamically delete this uh, attribute. And the same thing for the uh, second property called, uh, or attribute called events, which is an, again an array. And this is the third way. I'm doing it via the setter and getter. So next thing is uh, prototype-based inheritance. I'll just again go to the uh, same thing.
in JavaScript, function is also a class. So there is a no uh, independent or uh, you know specific operator or keyword called say like what you do in Java or something like for defining a class. You can just define a function and that becomes a class. And here the, the class is a person. And uh, say hello is is a new uh, method that I'm. Uh, creating in the class using the prototype. Similarly, uh, there are <coughs> functions. In JavaScript, function is a first class citizen. Now, what that means is it can be assigned to a variable. It can be an object's property. It can be passed to another function as an argument. It can be returned by a function. It's a class by default, and it can be anonymous. So here you see there are uh, multiple function definitions, all doing the same thing, taking two arguments, x and y, and returning the uh, you know, multiplication of x and y. In the first case, the function is defined with the function constructor. This is a regular function definition called multiply. And this is a function expression that is uh, assigned to a, a literal called uh, multiply and using an anonymous function. Similarly, there is something called uh, interesting thing about uh, in JavaScript called closure. Closure is nothing but uh, in one line you can define a closure as a nested function. So uh, the outer function, uh, so you have function within function. So you have uh, the uh, outer function within the inner function. Together, they make up a closure. The inner function, uh, the inner function can only be accessed by statements within the outer function. And the inner function can access arguments and variables of the outer function. But the vice versa is not possible. So any variables within the inner function is not accessible. So here you see a very simple uh, closure. It just returns, takes two arguments, x and y, and returns this sum. So here is the outer function called outside, takes the argument x, and this is the inner function inside, which takes the inner, uh, argument y, and returns x plus y. The outer functions uh, return this inner function. So which makes a closure. So there, the ways you can call this or do this uh, statement is you can call the outer function with the variable for uh, argument for uh, the outer function, and then you can whatever it returns that is this inside the inner function, they can pass an argument to it, and it returns eight in this case three plus five eight. You can also do it as like this. You can take this uh, outer function and pass two arguments separately. It also returns eight. Okay, so coming back. So what I wanted to tell you here is that you can see that we are just doing one simple stuff. And there were like multiple ways of doing it. Some bit easy, or uh, some sim simple, and some are really complex. So how do you make a static analyzer that's, that is able to you know, handle all these cases really well and uh, can figure out issues with mi a minimum? And the most important thing is with less false positives and l false negatives. So that is why I think we have a session here today uh, that's we will be talking about why it's a pain to write a JavaScript static analyzer. OK, now coming back to security as the context and JavaScript, in my experience, what I have found like when I, uh, in my free time when I hunt for bug bounties, I figured out that there are, there are many uh, you know, Fortune 500 companies who are very well protected. They have very really good server-side libraries that filter against 
regular uh, cross-site scripting attacks. Now, when I say regular, I mean reflected XSS and uh, stored XSS. But it's, it's, it's very surprising to see that DOM-based XSS is one such variant of cross-site scripting that is present or it's very common. You find it in almost uh, every such site. And this is due to the fact that JavaScript is responsible. It's, it happens in the client side and due to insecure JavaScript programming. So that's, that's a problem uh, that we, are, uh, we will be trying to uh, solve or uh, figure out uh, how we can solve it. And when you are writing applications in Node.js, it's very much possible to you know, inject JavaScript and run it in context of the, in, this, in the server side. Uh, it's, it's pretty much similar to you know, uh, local file inclusion or remote code execution on the server. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, as I, as I told you, um, server-side filtering fails for DOM-based accesses. That, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I hope uh, you all know. And JavaScript code review is intimidating, if you know what I mean. So how many of you, uh, I, I just want, wanted to ask uh, uh, once again the question, how many of you are uh, involved in reviewing, uh, security reviewing of uh, JavaScript source codes? Okay, so uh, would anybody uh, mind telling me what, how, how do you do it? Do you do it manually or do you use some tools like open source or commercial tools? Yeah. Tools? Any, any uh, would you like to name a few tools? Sorry? JSLint. JSLint, okay. Hellstorm. Okay. 45, okay. And uh, what, what is your satisfaction level? I mean, how, uh, how these tools perform? Are, are, are they really good? Are they, um, um, like, how did they handle false positives, false negatives? Fair? Fair? <laughs> okay. And um, the reason I ask this question is because there are the availability of so much uh, libraries, and uh, when, I, when we uh, scan JavaScript source code for uh, sourcing pairs, there, there are uh, libraries like jQuery, YUI, where you have some library dependent source and syncs as compared to the pure JavaScript based programs. So it's really uh, tricky to you know, maintain a track of all these libraries and you know, figure out what is the source and sync pair for, uh, e for each and every library. Uh, well, uh, as I said, uh, I, I didn't have access to many uh, enough uh, JavaScript source code scanners. So that's the reason I asked this uh, question to you guys. Um, OK. So what is the impact? of DOM-based XSS or server-side uh, script injection. I think the impact is almost same when you have uh, server-side, uh, sorry, uh, DOM-based XSS, it's, uh, whether it's reflected or not, the impact is same. Script injection on server-side uh, and in mobile applications can be really little because it runs, it, it, uh, it, it actually enables remote code execution in context to that application. And uh, just imagine about these uh, libraries or, or frameworks, or platforms like Node.js, Firefox OS, Windows 8, 8 applications. So I'd just like to show you some, uh, some of these uh, vulnerable sample codes before we can, uh, so that I can give you some context before we can move on to you know, what is JS Prime and uh, what it can do or not.
Okay. Uh, so this is a pretty uh, simple uh, example that uh, I have uh, of vulnerable code that I have written uh, using YUI. So what it does it it simply you know uh, tracks the the on key up event of this uh, text box and just displays whatever you type. As simple as that. <coughs> now, in this case, if you do something like this, so you have an XSS. And this is use this is a DOM based XSS. And <coughs> this is the client side script responsible for know causing this excesses this one is using uh, yui i have another one um, using jquery this is also the same example But in this case, it's using uh, jQuery. So th these are uh, some uh, sample, uh, you know, codes are uh, vulnerable to DOM-based excesses, insecure uh, JavaScript programming. And let me uh, go ahead uh, and show you one uh, vulnerable Node.js application that I have written using uh, JavaScript. Uh, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so it's ninety ninety one. <clears throat> so it's a pretty basic uh, Node.js application. Uh, what it does, it's, it's just, uh, it has three functionalities. You can uh, pass a JSON object, and you can save this, uh, create a profile with uh, the name, age, gender, location. You can view this profile. What it does, it, it takes this JSON object and writes a file on the disk, and then you know, reads it back to you. So, we can delete the profile. But interestingly, uh, if you go and uh, look here, this code is using eval. So that means I can uh, pass JavaScript statements as an argument and see whether it, we can create a, just to save time, I have just created uh, the payload. Uh, what I'll do is, we'll just go ahead and save it once again. And
So if you see here, with my payload, I was able to uh, run this command called ls and was able to list the directory on the server. So similarly, I can uh, run commands in the context of the server and, and create an arbitrary code execution um, you know, condition. So what we saw here is, uh, one second. So what we saw here was three different examples using three different uh, libraries or uh, as a platforms like YUI, jQuery, and Node.js, and how they can be vulnerable due to insecure Java coding practices like turning, uh, uh, making, uh, en en enabling uh, DOM-based accesses, server-side uh, code execution. So these are the problems that we have to solve in context to security. So. Let me introduce here JS Prime. So what is JS Prime? It's, it's a pretty lightweight uh, source code scanner for identifying security issues using static analysis. It's a tool written in JavaScript to analyze JavaScript. And uh, it uses the open source uh, JavaScript parser, ECMAScript parser called es uh, Esprima. Um, and who is it ma uh, meant for? JS Prime is, uh, from the day we started uh, working on this project, we, we were uh, sure of one thing. We were actually focused towards uh, making this tool developer centric so that they can uh, use this tool while writing their code. It, it can be also used by security reviewers or uh, so code reviewers as a first pass uh, of, in, in identifying security issues in JavaScript code. And security professionals uh, also may find it useful during their pen penetration testing engagements. Uh, but uh, some of the niche uh, you know, functionalities or features uh, that helps you Id identify issues on the fly uh, that sec security professionals might uh, require may not be present in this version. But it's, it's in this, right in this version, it's more focused towards developers. So before I uh, go ahead and give you a demo of the tool, I just wanted to uh, briefly run you through and give you an overall uh, idea about how this works. So as I said, we are using the open source uh, JavaScript uh, parser called Esprima to generate the AST, or the abstract syntax table. Now I'll just go ahead and uh, give you a, a demo of how this uh, Esprima AST look like. So how many of you are familiar with Esprima? Okay. So Esprima is a, a very a pretty interesting JavaScript parser. Um, it's written by a guy called uh, Arya Hidayat. And it's written in JavaScript, so you can use it, uh, run it in the browser, as well as it has a, a, a port of Node.js, so you can run it on the server side. So it has a very basic, so this is an online demo of this parser. So you see a very uh, simple uh, one-line statement. We have a variable called answer, and uh, it's assigned the multiplication of six and eight. And the abstract syntax tree that Esprima generates looks something like this. So what it does is it, it abstracts all these uh, you know, tricky co coding style of developers and just represents uh, a JSON object. Of, of, of the code, and it, it has a very uh, parsable uh, JSON object so that we can actually pick up like what are the variable declarators, variable names, and the expressions happening. So what we do is we take this JSON object, 
and it also returns the you know um, line number and column number so that if you want to you know do some um, syntax highlighting stuff and it, it's being used in by some popular in browser uh, javascript ids uh, one of uh, one of my most favorite is uh, the cloud9 uh, jside they also use this uh, parser so we didn't try to write uh, our own parser because it's uh, we know that it's very tough you can just select this option to see the line number and column number of the particular statements okay so that was esprima now what we do with it once we take the javascript snippet or the code snippet code block we feed it to esprima and we generate the ast the json object that i just showed you we then parse the json uh, ast to locate all sources uh, I'm sure uh, all of you are aware of uh, these sources and sinks in context to JavaScript uh, DOM accesses. So I'll just uh, uh, give a small um, in introduction to sources. So any DOM APIs or any uh, APIs in JavaScript that actually takes uh, data that, that can be manipulated by the user or that takes user data, we call it as sources. So that's how the uh, XSS can arise. So if you call those uh, you know, APIs, you can uh, actually take user data. For example, uh, one of the uh, most common example is the location.hash object. So it, it takes anything after the URL fragment, the hash. So that, that part is uh, modifiable by the user. You can, uh, the user can tamper with it. And that's what the, uh, we call it a source. So we locate all such. So I'll show you a list of sources and sinks uh, that we have, uh, that we are using. So it, it takes uh, all the sources, including parsing um, within the objects, objects that are defined within the code blocks and pro prototype based assignments and keeping track of their scopes. So we, we know, so this is a scope aware analysis. So we track the scope of these uh, objects or the APIs or the statements and uh, for, for our next steps. Then thirdly, what we do is we parse the AST to locate all assignment operations. So for example, there might be code snippets where direct assignment from source to sync is, is not happening. What they are doing is they are taking an intermediary uh, step where the DOM API is assigned to another variable, third party variable, and that variable goes to sync. So that's, we all keep track of those assignments as well. <clears throat> also keeping track of the scopes. We then uh, pass the AST again to locate all syncs and sync aliases. Now when I say sync, uh, syncs are those functions or assignments which make uh, this uh, code execution possible. For example, one of the most common sync is eval. Now, if you pass anything uh, with to eval and that anything is user controllable, that can cause code execution. Now, there might be cases where user input is not being directly passed to eval, but we, we have created an alias for eval. So for example, say x is equal to eval. Now we are passing something into x. Now x is not eval. I mean, uh, if, you, if you read it um, in the code, x is not eval. But in runtime, x is eval. So we track all, uh, again, keeping their scope, uh, keeping a track of their scope. Then we move on and find or locate functions, including closures, anonymous functions, which are fed with uh, sources as arguments. We find functions where uh, sources has been passed as an argument, and while keeping track of the return values. If the function is returning something, uh, we, we keep track, whether it's returning the source as it is, or it's returning the function, whatever it's returning, we, we keep, keep a track. Now, once we have collected, so uh, all these data structures are there with us, uh, all, the, all these information or metadata are with us, what we then do is we see if any filter functions are applied on these 
सोर्सेस और और डायरेक्टली ओवर द सोर्सेस और वेन और बिफोर द सोर्स इज बींग पास टू द सिंग्स ना वेन आई से फिल्टर फंक्शंस फिल्टर फंक्शंस आर नथिंग बट फंक्शंस दैट are written or that are called to avoid excesses or avoid such security uh, issues for example uh, um, uh, like say filter function you ha you have you remove you write a function that actually removes or strips out all those uh, you know uh, special characters that can cause uh, excesses uh, so some libraries do offer uh, such filter functions uh, natively one is uh, with yui we have uh, the escape uh, Uh, you know uh, object uh, escape class where we have the html escape dot html which actually filters out all uh, meta characters that can be dangerous in context to html similarly uh, the encode uri component decode uri component uh, encode uri component can be uh, treated as a filter function when you are actually passing uh, sources in context to url so for example you are setting it to an iframes source so in in that context if you are actually um, passing something like the javascript colon uh, alert document dot cookie in that case if you apply uh, encode uri component in that case uh, it, it will not be a issue anymore so we we, we keep track of those uh, filter uh, functions and i'll 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 tell you how this uh, how we feed these filter functions uh, uh you can um, pass your own custom filter functions as well now once we have done up to this what we do is we do the same process all these steps in the backward direction so first we did it in a top down direction then we uh, move backwards in a bottom up approach so that we want to just be double sure that we reach the exact source if we start from this sink again so that just to avoid false positives and then once we confirm that this particular uh, data flow or this particular control flow is actually is responsible or will, will create a excesses condition we then uh, report them uh, in a by collecting the line numbers in this version we are not actually uh, reporting their uh, the column numbers of the lines we are not just highlighting the uh, variable names or the sinks but we are just reporting the line numbers all together okay so these are some of the color codes that we are using in um, in the report so we have an orange color uh, so i'll i'll just give you a demo so this will make more sense then but uh, just for a uh, heads up that the orange color is an active source so if we figure out that there is a source which is reaching a sink Uh, and it is making up a pair for creating an excesses or say code execution we mark that source line as in orange color and if it is a source but it is it is it is unused i mean it it, it could not reach a sink we uh, color it as brown uh and if it is a source and it has been assigned to some other variables which are not again, uh, again used we mark them as gray active source assignments for example we have a location dot hash which is reaching uh, to eval via a, a third step say x is equal to um, um, there is a third intermediary ass assignment we mark them as a in, in uh, yellow color uh, which is an active source assignment red is uh, the sink if we find that there is a, a sourcing pair that's causing a ex execution we mark that sink as red and pink color is for functions that lead to sinks i mean that are uh, i mean function arguments which actually take uh, the functions which take arguments and pass it to the sinks we mark them as in pink colors okay so what is uh, what js prime can do it can follow a uh, code execution order i i'll show you in the demo uh, of these points it can handle first class functions the uh, i have mentioned it earlier it can analyze prototype based inheritance it can understand type casting it understands context based filter functions uh, it has to be manually fed though you have to manually uh, configure it uh, it has library aware sources and sinks so far uh, we are supporting just for yui and jquery 
it has a scope aware analysis for uh, variables objects and functions so that we have you have less false positives it has control flow analysis and data flow analysis what it cannot do js prime alone cannot detect 100% of the issues like for with any other tool it cannot uh, it uh, learn sources and sinks automatically you have to uh, provide them if you are using a very custom library it cannot handle obfuscated javascript like in case of malwares or something it can't report issues in minified javascript unless beautified so there's a uh, catch here it can analyze uh, you know minified javascript but since minified javascript is nothing but in in one line so it cannot actually report the issue because it will report in it report that this line one has issue line one has source and sync so you need to beautify it so that you can and you will be able to understand the report and it cannot uh, actually uh, analyze dynamically generated javascript using eval so if you are constructing javascript uh, or if you are uh, executing uh, javascript statements using eval so it's it's not uh, in this version it's not uh, possible yet but we are working on it what about stability and automation Uh, so far we have benchmarked that uh, up to 1500 lines of code uh, this tool can uh, handle in a single scan uh, it it might be able to scan a bit longer uh, javascript but this was the longest javascript file uh, we had to test with us uh, we do have a node js port so that you can run it on the backend server uh, for large scale automation you can uh, you know pass javascript uh, files uh, i mean sorry javascript codes and it can return you results you can make it as a web service actually to integrate in your uh, continuous integration environment in, la in enterprise application uh, environment and it's actually a lot dependent on esprima's uh, robustness and it can be the first point failure so we have seen uh, some uh, javascript files where esprima itself is unable to parse or it you know uh, breaks so in this case we are since we are dependent upon the ast that esprima generates we are not able to you know go further okay so time for demo what uh, we have here is Okay, so uh, this is the uh, web version of uh, JS Prime. This looks looks something like this. So you have a um, you know code editor. You can paste your JavaScript uh, snippets. So if you guys are wondering like how you can uh, scan multiple files because it's just a code editor. So I'll come to that in a minute. um okay uh, so you remember the first example that i showed you and uh, that i have uh, that i coded in yui so this is the script function what i'll do is I'll just paste it here, and I'll try to run scan.
Okay, so you see here, uh, this is how it, the report looks like. This set HTML is a YUI specific sync. So it was able to analyze uh, this script and let's figure out that here we have taken uh, this something, uh, this is again a YUI specific uh, source which takes, a, so you have a, a text box text email and it takes the value and, and you know, passes it to the div. So it, it was able to you know, detect the XSS. Um, I'll just go ahead and uh, show you something uh, like this. <coughs> so uh, that was a simple example. Let us go ahead here and uh, I'll just try to is something like this. So this is a short snippet, but it's kind of uh, a little bit more complicated than the first one. What I've done here is uh, there are two functions. <coughs> one is uh, called as time message, and the second one is called fire. Now fire, uh, when you uh, call this function, it takes the location dot hash and passes it to, a, it, it has an assignment to call. And call is passed as an argument to time message, which is defined earlier. And this becomes the argument, and it's passed to something called eval. <coughs> now, this is a pretty uh, simple example of uh, DOM accesses. Now, if you see here, this it, it reports the first line, uh, the active source call, and it's. Uh, the pink color shows the source pass being passed through a, uh, a function, and finally the uh, sync, which is eval. Now, interesting thing to know, uh, I mean, to uh, notice in this report here is it is actually following the code execution order. If you look here, though the sync was present in line number three, it's not reported in line number three. I mean. First line is reported is num line number eight here, which means that it actually followed the code execution order and took the source from here. Then it went to time message, uh, which is being we pass we are passing argument to time message, and then it reported line number nine, the next line that was executed, and finally it went all the way up to the uh, to the top and reported the sync. So line number three is reported at the end. So now let us modify this source code a little bit. Let us take uh, two arguments here, say A, B, C, and uh, let us pass call to the second as a second argument. And let us pass a string, say, 12. You see that it reported the sync, but what it reported here is it's a non-active source. That means the source was not reaching the sync. But if you do a swap of these values, it was again it's again orange. It shows that it's an active source now. It reached the sync. Now, what happens if I make call as a string instead of a literal? Again, it was able to identify that call is, it's. It's not actually gripping, but it's able, it was able to identify that call is actually a literal. And uh, so uh, it's, it's a string. It's not a literal, actually. So let us move on to some uh, more uh, interesting uh, examples, or say, test cases. OK, this one. This is a very uh, typical uh, example of uh, redirects developers do. 
So we have a function called reload, and uh, there is a variable called read, read air, which takes the location dot hash. So uh, when anything that is after the hash, uh, so if you have a passed an URL, your page, the page will redirect to redirect you to that URL. So and the sync here is set attribute. But the interesting thing to note here is set attribute itself is not a sync. If you pass the variable to set attribute and set the attribute is source, only then it becomes a sync. So in this case, and uh, and the uh, element is uh, an iframe. So let me just put it here and run. Okay. So you see the orange color again. So this is the uh, line. It took the it is the source and it found the uh, sync. But let me just uh, you know change this to something say ID, which which is not an exploitable uh, issue. So you see here, it's it's not an active source anymore. No sinks are reported. So uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, okay. So this is uh, the prototype-based inheritance uh, that I was talking about. It's also able to analyze this. So we just uh, so you see here we have a function called uh, template which is a class and we are defining a uh, prototype uh, called exec and assigning eval to it so it becomes an alias and then we have another uh, attribute called param which is actually taking the source we have a new class called clone which is inherited from this uh, uh, template from the template class. And we are uh, creating a new uh, <coughs> instance called xy. And then we are calling xy.exec and passing the param, uh, which is nothing but the source. Yeah, so you see the orange color and the source is able to pass through. And it was able to track down that it's uh, actually a XSS condition. So this is a bit more. Complex. So this this is an uh, XSS that was uh, caused with uh, document dot cookie. Just refresh it once more. So there is uh, this variable ck holds the document dot cookie, and we have a function called get cookie, which basically reads the cookie values. And uh, there is a cookie called RLO. So this was taken from a live uh, site. Uh, we have a portal called uh, Rediff.com, which is a very popular portal in India. So they had a XSS, which is now uh, fixed. So this is the code responsible for causing that XSS there. And uh, this cookie value is being passed to an inner HTML, which is a sync. OK, so just. Okay, you see, uh, this is the active source document dot cookie, and if we go down bottom, we see that uh, active sync found uh, inner HTML. The it was assigned. So I have another uh, um, example to show you that I found uh, in uh, during uh, my one of my. So this was an XSS uh, that I found in PayPal. So I'll just go ahead and uh, now let this scan this code. So yeah, it was it, it's able to you know scan. So the use case here was they were allowing uh, you know uploading a file name. Uh, I mean a, a file. Um, and that file name field was uh, taken from this value, and uh, it was being passed uh, to inner HTML, which was uh, creating the XSS condition. Okay, so there are more uh, complex uh, test cases. Just that uh, we are running out of time. Okay, so that was a brief introduction of how this tool works and uh, how it can uh, um, follow these uh, 
um, you know, JavaScript features. So what is the roadmap for this project? Uh, we are working on improving the performance and stability. Uh, we are uh, trying to focus on multiple file scanning, uh, Node.js uh, project scanning. Oh, okay, I, I just uh, I forget to show you one more thing. Uh, if we go here. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, Node.js application that I uh, showed you in the beginning. So this is a tool is also able to scan uh, Node.js uh, code, and you see here is that we are taking uh, um, the uh, one of the arguments, URL arguments, and we are passing, and is being passed to eval. So yeah, just to give you a um, the example of how we can scan uh, Node.js code as well, Node.js projects. Uh, okay, and uh, we are also planning to have an uh, ID, uh, IDE plugin for, say, Notepad.js or WebStorm or whatever is your favorite IDE. Uh, more library support uh, in addition to YUI and jQuery. And uh, support for uh, string manipulation simulation. And of course, your suggestions if you have any. Uh, so the summary is, it's an actively uh, work in progress. Uh, we have a promising roadmap. Um, so we are, we are we are committed in making it um, even more better. Um, it's open source today. So you can just go ahead and uh, check out the code. And uh, we, we have the we have a Node.js uh, port as well. So I'll just uh, go ahead and show you. Uh, Okay, so by default, this runs on 127. So here you go. You have uh, something like say var is equal to loca location dot hash, and then you pass it to eval. And so the UI is not uh, there, uh, that much fancy in the Node.js version, but you, you get the idea. So you can just take it and make it as a web service and run it as a uh, large scale um, environment. So just to wrap up, uh, it's there on uh, one more thing. We have github.com slash definition. So here you have JS Prime. You can just download the source code. And uh, yeah, this is how, what this JS Prime source code looks like. So you can just specify uh, your sources and syncs, right? And uh, you can like uh, uh, mention like uh, syncs with conditional uh, conditional syncs, like whether you have set attribute when you have href or src. And similarly, you can write filter functions like we have for escape HTML and code URI component. Okay, so I just wanted to thank uh, these guys, Arya Hidayat, Paul Thirial, Bishan Singh, and uh, Rafay Baloch. Any questions?